everybody. I would like to welcome to the stage our first keynoter this morning. Uh, this is the, one of the co-creators of Apache Kafka, the CEO of Confluent. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Krebs. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> I hope you're all as excited to be here as I am. Uh, so I'm going to be talking today about event streams. And you know, I guess it's no surprise to anyone that there's a whole wave of technology and interest around this topic. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about how to build out this capability in your organization. I'll talk a little bit about why I think it's happening and what I think it means. Uh, but I'm going to start and talk about why, why I think this is happening now. So I, you know, I think it's, it's no surprise uh, if I say that the world is changing. Um, there, there's all these waves of new technology that are coming. And if I think about my two kids, you know, they, they have no idea why Saturday morning cartoons would have to be on Saturday morning. Uh, they have no idea how that thing in the picture could be a phone because how would you type on it? Um, and it's very possible that they, they may not actually ever have to learn how to drive, uh, which is an interesting thought. And this is something that isn't just affecting our personal lives, it's affecting how companies work, how they're built. Um, and I wanted to drill into this and, and, try and try and talk a little bit about how I think it's connected to this emerging paradigm of event streams. And so to start with, I thought I, I would talk about just one area, uh, which I think is seeing as much change as any other, and that's transportation, cars, how we get around. Uh, th this is an area that's undergoing three or four major waves of change all at once. So cars are going from being gas-powered to electric. They're becoming these connected devices. Um, in the future, they may drive themselves. In the future, they may be available as a service. And so if you think about this, these changes actually aren't unique to this industry. You know, you have something that's a hardware product, um, and it's transitioning to being something that's not just hardware, it's not just a physical good. It, it's also, you know, hardware and software and a global internet service. It's all packaged up, and that's what the product is. And it's going from something you kind of buy up front to something that's available on demand. It's something that's kind of opaque, like if you get a ride, you don't really know if you're going to be stuck in traffic. You don't know what, when you'll get there, how you'll get there, uh, to something where you have kind of real-time visibility into everything that's happening with it. Uh, my car actually pops up something that tells me when the tire pressure is low. Um, and, and cars are going from something that you know, had no data as part of the product. In fact, that wouldn't even make sense. If you said, hey, what, you know, what data systems power your car? You, it, it, it's not even a sentence that has any meaning to something that's actually built on a foundation of data that's optimizing all the parts of how a car works, the applications that are running in the car, the applications, it's a weird sentence, um, you know, the cars as a service, how you would hail them, how you would get them. Um, and there, there's a whole set of companies that are going through this uh, transition. There's a set of established brands that have existing businesses that are running at scale that have amazing products that people love. Uh, and they're trying to actually adopt to all this and build this into their business. And then there's a set of challengers, right? There's a set of up-and-comers that have a new idea for what a car is, that have a new idea for how you get from point A to point B, um, and are trying to take this new technology platform and kind of start fresh and build it in. And if you think about it, this, isn't, this transformation isn't unique to transportation. It's not just about cars. Almost any area of the economy that you think about is going through a similar thing. So if you look at banking, there's a set of huge established banks that have you know, built themselves over many years. Uh, but there's also a set of up-and-coming challengers that are trying to get into this space, that are trying to you know, build out payment systems and banking systems and in investment apps. Um, a similar thing is happening in retail. This one's actually pretty far along, where you have a set of established companies, but also a set of digital challengers. Uh, going back to e-commerce, but now with things even like subscription payment models that are very, very different. And in all these industries, this 
is built on technology. You have established brands uh, that are trying to rebuild on the technology, and you have challengers that have been built fresh. So what, what enables this? What's causing this transformation? So I, I talked about you know, four different industries. I think you could go on and apply this to probably any industry, probably whatever industry you work in. Um, but I, I think there's actually a smaller set of enabling technologies. There's you know, dozens of these new digital applications, but there's really a much smaller number of core technologies that are driving this change in all these companies. And you know, I think if you tried to think of what they are, um, you know, I, th I think one that would come to mind is cloud. So if you want to build a car that's always connected to the internet, that has internet-powered features, if you want to build real-time mapping, you need access to computation on demand. You need to have global data centers. You need to have global networks. You can build this all out from scratch, but it's pretty hard. So a lot of these applications wouldn't be possible without access to these kind of computational resources as a service. I think um, a lot of the most sophisticated, most interesting uh, modern applications are built on data. They're, they're making smart decisions automatically. They're using either modern machine learning algorithms or just optimized, efficient, smart decision making based on the full context of what's happening in the customer experience. And a lot of these applications are built on mobile, whether it's how you shop or how you, know, you watch a movie or even these connected cars that are, that are actually continually plugged in. The ability to have everybody, but also everything, as part of the global internet, running software and connected is critical to this. But, but I actually think, uh, beyond these three, which are maybe the obvious ones, uh, I think that there's a fourth big foundational technology that's powering a lot of that. And that's this emerging world of event streaming. And uh, you, know, you might say, OK. Um, is it really? Well, if we go through all of these areas, if we look at transportation, if you look at real-time mapping and, and traffic information, ETA calculations, uh, real-time diagnostics on cars, uh, the matching process to get a ride and have it pick you up, all of those use event streaming really at the core. If you look at a lot of the modern applications in banking, fraud systems, trading and real-time risk systems, uh, mobile applications, the, the attempt to modernize the customer experience uh, and, and have a customer experience that you know, spans not just in person, but a whole set of digital interactions, a lot of that is built on event streaming. If you look at retail and what a modern retailer looks like, whether it's a modern e-commerce retailer or a brick-and-mortar hybrid online retailer, there's a set of, of core use cases from how they manage inventory, logistics, uh, real-time reporting, all the personalization and information systems. These are all being built around event streams. And in the entertainment area, uh, this is an area that's becoming as data-driven as anything else. Uh, what, what you want to watch, when you want to watch it, the kind of personalized feed of what's coming out, um, all the business model in in-app purchases, a lot of that is being driven by event streams. And so it's no surprise that you know, all those companies I described, both the kind of established brands as well as the challengers, have talked about their use of Apache Kafka, have talked about the use of event technology, and how this is part of their next generation applications. And I, I think that's incredibly cool. So uh, this is something that's really happening across all these areas. And I think it, it represents not just a new technology, not just a faster way of doing things, but I think it actually represents a fundamental paradigm shift. And this is uh, a word that's maybe a little bit overused. Uh, everything is kind of a paradigm shift these days. But I think it's actually true in this case. So it's a paradigm shift because it changes how we conceptualize the problem, you know, and therefore how we think about a solution. And, and so if, if I were to give an analogy, um, I think cloud is another one of these paradigm shifts, and it's about the future of the data center. So when I got started, a data center was a cold room with good power uh, where you could stash all your computers. And when you wanted to make a change in the data center, you called somebody up, and they would help you rack up more servers or change how it was arranged. And, and that was the paradigm that we operated in, and we felt like that was good. There was you know, better people to call. There was colder rooms, there was better power, but that, that was really the degree of goodness of a data center. And 
Um, in the modern world, that's totally changed. Now you have the ability to think of that type of fundamental infrastructure as code, as something that can be programmed, that can be brought up automatically, that can be controlled. That's a completely different way of thinking. And I, I, I think that there's a similar paradigm shift happening around events and around event streams. And I, I think this has the possibility to really be the future of data. This, this actually encompasses a lot of the different things we think of as data, the activity that your customers do, the kind of core set of transactions that happen on your databases that can be streamed in real time, the integration of you know, large volume logging data, um, all the different kinds of data you have in an organization can be thought of as this way. And it combines the, the past data with what's happening right now. And uh, this paradigm shift of viewing data as a continuous stream, you know, I, I think this can underlie a lot of the architecture of a modern digital company. And so I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. I'm going to talk uh, about this event streaming paradigm. And I'm going to talk about why I think it's coming about, and what were the technologies that come before, and what's the problem that it solves. So when I think about it, I think there's really kind of two core problems in application infrastructure that you need to solve, that, that maybe every application needs to solve. And you know, one of these is really basic. It's, you know, what's the state of the world? What are your products? What are your customers? If you build a simple CRUD app, it needs to be able to look things up. It needs to know what's, what's the state of the world. And we've had a solution to this for a long time, which is databases. And you know, database technology is something that's evolved over the years, but it's had huge commercial investment. Number of large companies have been built around this. Uh, it's had huge academic investment. You know, you take any university in the world, if they have a good computer science department, they have a whole set of people with PhDs trying to make databases better. And so this is, this is a solution that's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty mature. So this is a problem we've thought a lot about, and we have a, a good way of solving. And it, it's getting better. It's, it's not done. Um, but but it's, you know, it's, it's a relatively mature solution. The other problem, though, is what's happening in the world. And if you think about what a business does, a lot of it is around this problem. It's around reacting to what's sold or what, what customer, a customer has done or uh, reacting to the cars moving around in the world, what needs to be delivered, the trades that have been executed. All of those kind of reactions, they haven't had as much of a platform. You can kind of build out your own solution. There's been messaging systems. There's network and RPC layers. There's ETL products. But the reality is, not nearly as much thought and effort, not nearly as much investment has gone into this side. And the, the result is there's kind of been a couple of default technologies that have been out there. There's been messaging systems, which are fast. Um, they're low latency. But they're difficult to scale. They don't really work across an entire company. Um, they, they're really just about you know, the, what's happening at the very moment. You can't go at all into the past. And then there's been a set of ETL and data integration tools that are reliable. They're high throughput, but they're batch oriented. And so these have been kind of the two older paradigms that, that have been around. The idea that you have these you know, databases of stored records, and if an application needs to find out what happened, it just scrapes those at the end of the day and then processes them. Uh, and the idea that you can have transient messages, but if you're not there to get it right away, uh, it'll only be around for a little bit. But the result of building on these uh, hasn't been as simple as we hoped. When you actually look at what this looks like at scale in a modern organization that has multiple lines of business, that has multiple environments, the interconnection of all these things is immensely complicated. It's a giant mess. And when you think about this kind of digital transformation that's happening, when you think about the new applications that customers expect, if you're building on top of this kind of platform, you're not going to make that transition successful, right? There's, there's too much legacy. There's too much to change. W when a sale occurs, which of these systems have to be updated, and how do they all change? It's, it's impossible to reason about it. And, and I think this is what has driven the emergence of this event streaming paradigm. And so like any paradigm shift, it solves a lot of these problems together. You know, this is something that can be high throughput, that can scale across an organization, that's durable, that's reliable, and is also low latency. But that's actually not all it is. So like any paradigm shift, 
Um, it's not just, uh, it doesn't just solve the questions you had originally posed. It's actually a different way of thinking about the solution. And this is the idea of really thinking of data not as just stored records and not as just you know, a, a transient message being sent, but as an event stream, which is actually both. It's both a stored record of the past as well as a trigger out to anything else that needs to know about what's happening right now and that goes on into the future. And this allows us uh, to take this big, messy picture and actually kind of start fresh, actually rethink how it works. Rather than having everything kind of connected to everything else, um, be able to think about this kind of event streaming platform as a fundamental piece of infrastructure. And this solves a couple of big problems. You know, the first problem is just how everything interconnects. It can act as a kind of universal it, pipeline for data. You know, it can connect databases, which may have incredibly important transactional information. It can connect applications that may capture high volume information about what's happening in your environment. It can do this across data centers. It can do it across environments. Uh, it can do it across latency domains. So, so low latency applications can connect to batch systems and vice versa. And this interconnection, I think, can actually sit as the backbone of a modern data architecture. But, but this, this value proposition, as big as it is, actually isn't even the main thing. Because once you have this, once you have streams of events representing what's happening in the business, you actually have the ability to build a whole new class of applications uh, that are really, really hard to build without it. Uh, and these are applications that actually take advantage of the event stream, that actually take advantage of the fact that you have everything happening in this business available in this format. These are the kind of real-time inventory management systems that I talked about, the real-time transportation solutions that you would find in the ride-sharing apps, the really rich real-time customer experiences that are driven by you know, having a clear picture across an organization of every interaction with the customer or the information that's available about them. Uh, real-time machine learning applications. These are a set of things that are really much, much easier to build on this type of platform. And this is, you know, I, th I think this is how these paradigm shifts in technology play out. You make the change to solve a problem you had around connectivity, but you get as a result a whole set of new applications that would have been really hard to conceptualize or build in the absence of that. And so I'll talk about a few aspects of how you can build this type of event streaming platform with Kafka. I'll talk about a, a few of the problems you need to solve. I'm not going to talk about all of it. I think you know, that's what this conference is for, is you can go to the different talks and learn uh, in much more depth uh, about how people have you know, solved all the different aspects of this. So, but I'll go through a few of the key ones and at least highlight them. So I think when a lot of people think about Kafka, they really think about this kind of commit log. And it's actually not, not a bad thing to think about. This is the fundamental data structure. The idea that you have this stream of what has happened in the past that goes all the way to what's happening right now. And that you can read and process that uh, as you wish. And, and this, is, you know, this is really the core engine uh, that this streaming world, I think, is built around, is these event streams. But it, it's actually not the only thing that's there. So if you think about this event stream as kind of being you know, this powerful engine that you're going to build on top of, usually in a real organization, you kind of need the rest of the car. You need all the other parts that are going to work with that. If, you, if you're working directly with just event streams and you know, reading and writing to them, um, that's good for a certain set of applications, but it's relatively labor intensive. And if you're going to do this at scale, you need to think through uh, another set of problems to really enable that. And you know, a big part of the Kafka ecosystem that's become increasingly important is the connector layer. This is how can I take this and actually plug it into the many systems I have? How can I uh, hook into legacy databases? How can I hook into new cloud systems? How can I hook into SaaS applications? And most importantly, how can I do that without writing and maintaining a bunch of custom code for each of these integrations? And how can I do it in a way that's scalable and resilient, uh, that follows best practices? And you know, this is becoming a critical part of the Kafka deployments we see, is the, the ability to run these connectors in a homogeneous way and manage them when you go beyond just a few integrations to, to dozens or even hundreds. And once you start to have these data streams, of course, the next thing you want to be able to do is process them. 
And this is the world of uh, stream processing. And I, I, I think this is a really big deal. I, I think that um, in some sense, when you're working directly with an event stream, it's almost like using the file system, right? You can seek around. You can read and write individual bytes. But the world of stream processing actually opens up the ability to work with something that's more like a relational database, where you say what you want to happen, and it happens. You don't necessarily say which point in the file you want to seek to and which byte you want to update. And so we've been putting a lot of effort into KSQL, which is uh, a stream processing SQL implementation, a, a streaming SQL engine uh, for Apache Kafka. And this makes it really easy to treat streams um, almost like you would tables in a relational database. So you can join them together. You can aggregate them. You can filter them. A lot of the common operations you would find yourself doing programmatically, you have available. And if you're coming uh, from a totally different space, uh, but you know something about SQL, you can apply that knowledge to this event streaming world. And you know, this isn't just something that makes it easier. You know, it actually brings together these two uh, fundamental ideas I talked about, the idea of stored records in a table and the idea of streams of data and the ability to translate back and forth between these. So if you have connectors capture, capturing changes from databases, you can treat that like a table and, and operate on it as it updates. You can send it off somewhere else to be stored. And, and we're seeing this get adopted for all kinds of use cases, um, real-time monitoring and analytics, uh, real-time ETL where you're just munging data pipelines as they flow, uh, and even simple application development. And KSQL actually builds on the core stream processing facilities in Kafka. This allows for you know, transactionally correct processing. It allows for scalable fault tolerance. Um, and you can use those programmatic APIs in Kafka as well. And, and this is part of a whole emerging ecosystem of stream processing and event processing tools, so things like Flink, and Spark, but also things like the whole serverless world, which is often very event-driven and provides a simple way to react and process individual events. And so th this, this world of stream processing, I think, is becoming an essential part of uh, every event streaming platform. The next problem you need to think about if you're going to do this at any scale in an organization with important data is security. So it's wonderful to try and you know, get a lot of the data into one place. But to do that, you need to actually think about how you're going to make it secure. And especially in the modern world, this is becoming even more important than it's ever been. How can you control access to the data? How can you keep it encrypted? Um, how can you control authorization so that not everybody can read everything? Th this is an incredibly important thing to think through as you're designing your system. And once you've done that, and, and as it starts to get used, the, the ability to actually scale operations. So one of the things we see over and over again is these setups going from individual applications uh, to something used by a few applications and teams to something used at really massive global scale. And to make that transition, you have to really become more mature in how you run the software. It's actually not a trivial thing to run any kind of distributed data system. And it's harder still to run something that's multi-tenant, that's shared by many applications. And that kind of sharing is exactly the point of something in this space. You want event streams that go between things. So th this is an area we, we've been putting a lot of effort into, is trying to curate uh, an ecosystem of tools that, that people can use to actually take an event streaming platform and bring it to life in, in their company. And you, know, you can do this uh, by just taking many of the open source things out there, but we try and curate a lot of these. And that's, that's what uh, Confluent produces with Confluent Platform. This is you know, a set of connectors, uh, schema management facilities, tools for operations, uh, security features. Uh, and we make this available as a software product. It all gets tested together and works together. But, but as importantly, we make it available also as a fully managed service. And this is something that I think is incredibly important. Um, I think in the modern world, you really don't want to use software that's built by people who don't actually run it themselves at scale. Uh, you never want to be the only person that's actually uh, using it from that side. And you know, this has become a really important part of our business. Um, it was something that we did with Kafka from the very beginning. As we were writing the early code, we were also uh, operating it. And as Confluent has gotten to scale, the ability to actually 
you know, have a hosted service has allowed us not only to give people world-class operations, you know, kind of at the click of a button, which I think is an incredibly cool thing, uh, but it's also allowed, you know, really forced us to be rigorous in the software that we built. And we have a, a new release coming out today that has a huge list of features. I'm not going to go through them all uh, right now, but you can go check it out. Um, it brings a new version of Kafka, a whole set of features in the clients, a whole bunch of operational features, a bunch of new stuff in KSQL. It's definitely worth checking out. Uh, and uh, you know, I think this is a great way, if you're thinking about how to build out this streaming platform capability, I think this is a great starting point. So, so I talked a little bit about this uh, emerging uh, event streaming platform and the, the paradigm shift towards event streams. I think what's most exciting in this area is actually that this is something that's happening now. Um, this, you, know, there's, you hear about a lot of hype about different technologies. Uh, a lot of them don't quite get to scale. They, they don't quite you know, make it out of the lab. Uh, but the, the adoption in this area is actually huge. So Kafka is in production now at tens of thousands of companies, uh, running in many of these at massive scale. So with trillions of events per day, uh, with thousands of engineers that work around these systems. And although this started with the kind of Silicon Valley tech giants, it's actually gone well beyond that. So of the Fortune 100, over 60% that we know of are using Kafka. Of course, with open source, you don't know everybody who's using it. It's probably it's like 90%. But these are just the ones that we've heard about that have told us, uh, told us about their usage. And I, I, I think that this is actually just getting started. You know, I, I think that we're going to see um, events and event streams as part of every interaction in the economy, every purchase, every bank transaction, um, every, every time you log into a system, every car ride, uh, every customer experience that's delivered. I think that this is going to be a foundational part of how a modern digital company is built. I think this event streaming platform it's really going to be the central nervous system that ties together these systems and that when you go into the, the event streaming platform of, of a modern company, you're going to be able to see the streams of everything happening in the business. And that's going to be an incredibly important part of the architecture of these companies. And I, I hope that um, you, know, you, you can go through the conference today and actually get different perspectives on this. I think you can hear about how people are building out uh, different parts of the systems. You can hear about some of the stream processing tools. You can hear about people doing integrations and connectors. You can hear about schemas and metadata management. You can hear about security. Uh, and so I, I, I hope you can put all this together and actually take it back with you and, and turn it into something useful. And with that, I thank you very much.